This is Pager. Pager's a monkey. And monkeys, it turns out, can play Pong. This is true. Give a monkey a joystick and they can teach themselves to play Pong. Pager, however, doesn't need a joystick. He's actually playing the game with his mind. How is this possible? Pager has something called a Neuralink device implanted in his brain. And in about six months, the device will be implanted in the first human. What could go wrong? The Neuralink Corporation is a neurotechnology company that develops implantable brain-computer interfaces. It was founded by Tesla, SpaceX, and former Twitter CEO Elon Musk because why not? The implant is called the N1, and what does it do? According to Elon Musk, it's a generalized input-output device that can, in the long term, interface with every aspect of the brain, and in the short term, interface with any given section of the brain. The device itself is roughly the diameter of a US quarter and has over 1,000 channels that are capable of recording and stimulating neural activity in the brain. It has a battery that can be charged wirelessly, and you could pair it with your phone over Bluetooth. Basically, it's kind of like having a smartwatch in your head, and eventually, Elon wants getting it to be as common as getting LASIK. So what's the goal here? Well, Elon says that his prime motivation for creating Neuralink is so that humans can, at a species level, keep up with AI. I mean, think about it. If AI learning goes exponential and we have digital super intelligence that is much smarter than we are, how do we mitigate the risk of it turning against us? And even if there's no threat and the AI turns out to be benevolent, how do we even go along for the ride? If you assume that your cell phone is already an extension of yourself, then the biggest limiting factor is the speed at which you can type or talk. In terms of data rate, you are probably able to physically send around 10 bits per second. Computers, on the other hand, operate at gigabit speeds. Furthermore, there are some people in this world who are physically unable to type or speak. Maybe all they have is their thoughts. And that's where Neuralink comes in. Until now, humans have only ever brought our thoughts into the physical world through our bodies. Whether it's art, music, language, our body has been the instrument. But to keep up with computers, it seems we're in need of an upgrade. So to demonstrate how this works, here's Pager again, the monkey with the N1 device implanted in his brain. He's using a joystick to move a cursor to the highlighted square on screen. The Neuralink device is wirelessly streaming in real time the firing rates from thousands of neurons in his brain to a computer. The computer then decodes the data by mathematically modeling patterns of neurologic activity and the different joystick movements they produce. After only a few minutes of calibration, the output of the decoder can be used to play the game instead of the joystick. Pager thinks he's moving the paddle with the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, the joystick is unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. It's not magic. It works simply because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. And FYI, you'll notice that he isn't chained to the chair or anything like that. In fact, the monkeys they work with voluntarily walk up to the chair and play the demo. They enjoy it. Why? See that metal straw in his mouth? Yeah, it's actually a banana smoothie drip. So he's playing Pong and drinking a banana smoothie. What's not to enjoy? Here's a pig. The pig has two Neuralink implants, one in the brain and one in the spinal cord. The little balls on its legs are motion capture devices. You can see the stream of neural activity being recorded in real time. This data can be used to decode the movement of the joints of the pig. As you can see on the left in yellow, stimulating a specific electrode on one thread causes a flexor movement of the left hind leg. Stimulating another electrode causes an extensor movement of the same leg. Researchers are able to stimulate a variety of threads and produce different movements that they can then sequence together to provide a series of desired movements, like walking. Once the computer maps out which neurons in the brain and spine are working together to cause a specific movement, those patterns can be programmed and executed just by thinking about it. It's basically how we move now. The spinal cord is just that, it's a cord. And in the case of someone with a severed spine, the cord is broken. Communication between the neurons in the brain and the motor neurons in the spine is cut, which causes paralysis. The Neuralink device reestablishes communication by bypassing the broken cord and sending those signals from the brain to the motor neurons in the spine wirelessly, which once again will allow a paralyzed person to walk the same as we do by just thinking about it. Neuralink engineers are confident that they can cure blindness, even if a person has been blind since birth, because even if the eyes don't work, the visual cortex of the brain is still there. 
by stimulating a neuron in the visual cortex of this monkey, a phosphine, or a flash, can be produced in a certain location in the monkey's mind. The monkey thinks it's seeing this flash on the screen, but really, there's nothing there. Researchers know that he's seeing the flash because his eyes move to it. You can think of these phosphines as pixels on a TV screen. Put enough of them together, and it will create a picture. With Neuralink, a visual prosthesis can be made that can turn an image of the real world into a series of phosphines or dots on a screen, allowing a blind person to see the real world in their mind. It would work something like this. The user could wear glasses that have a camera in it. The camera image would be processed by an app on their cell phone, which would then stream the data to the N1 implant in their brain. The N1 would convert that image into a pattern of stimulation to the electrodes in the visual cortex, thereby producing a pattern of phosphines that the blind person would see. With the current technology of 1000 electrodes, the image would look something like this. But the next generation of this device has already been planned to have 16,000 electrodes, resulting in an image with 16 times the resolution. It's like going from standard deaf TV to high deaf. But the fact that this would allow a blind person to see their surroundings in real time at all is incredible. The surgery to implant the N1 is actually done not by a person, but by a robot, fittingly called R1. There are a few reasons for the robot surgeon. First, the size of the threads on the N1 are roughly two red blood cells wide. That's tiny. The needle used to implant the threads is only 40 microns wide, also tiny. Couple this with the fact that the brain is constantly wiggling and there's vasculature that could cause a bleed if punctured, and you get why you might feel safer with a robot. R1 uses three imaging systems at once, which enables the robot to achieve vessel avoidance in real time, making it a much safer surgery than if attempted by a human. And if any of this sounds crazy to you, I would just like to point out that a therapy performed today called deep brain stimulation requires drilling a 14 millimeter hole in the patient's skull and then passing a two millimeter wire six to eight centimeters deep into the brain, all pretty much blindly, hoping that you don't hit a blood vessel. That is current technology that is happening right now. And despite the funny Keanu Reeves footage, I'm not saying this to make fun of deep brain stimulation, which has actually had very positive results for people with Parkinson's disease. It's just that the robotic technology that Neuralink is developing could drastically raise the bar in terms of patient safety for all surgeries across the board, even if it's not used for the N1 device. So this technology can be a big win in terms of patient safety. All right, so when is this device going to be put in a human? The Neuralink Corporation has been engaged with the FDA for quite some time, and at the time of this video, their CEO, Elon Musk, has stated that they are about six months away from implanting their device in the first human. Now, most likely, they will implant it in someone with a disability that they think they can immediately help, or maybe even implant it in Elon himself as a demonstration of its safety it's quite clear that this tech is still in its infancy. And one thing I took away from their most recent demonstration is that they are very much still in the hiring phase. Their presentation was almost like a job posting where they're looking for bright minds in a number of different fields, most of which aren't directly related to the brain at all. So all you college seniors out there, if you're interested in this, you may wanna check out their website and apply. It might help with some of that debt you racked up. Would you get this implant installed in your head? Right now, it sounds crazy, but I have to admit, so did the idea of a laser cutting your eye open to fix your vision 30 years ago. Now, thankfully, I'm an animated puppet, so I don't have to make that decision, but I'd love to know what you think. Hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the future.